And yes, I've been mountain skiing since the middle school, and since that time I've been constantly searching for the new activities to give me extra feelings and new degrees of freedom. <coughs> that feeling and the spirit was blowing around for many years, and I finally decided to step in three years ago, just at the same time our wonderful club was born, <laughs> and my way to the surfing of the world started from surfing the snow. <laughs> well, uh, oops. Uh, the history of snowboarding goes back to the Stone Age. Of course not. It's just 50 years ago. <laughs> uh, and at this time it was looking this way. It was called the snorfer. And the person to introduce this kind of equipment was the Sherman Popper. We decided to fasten two skis together and attach the rope to the end for better control. He then decided to uh, organize some competitions in Michigan and later on at some time two persons, outstanding persons, participated. The one was Tom Sims and he decided to put the carpet on the top of the wooden uh, stick and they attached the aluminum uh, aluminum plate to the bottom that gave him much more stability and speed and the Jake Burton who introduced the handmade uh, fixings handmade bindings to fix his feet to the board which gave him more mobility both these persons uh, uh, sorry Tom, oops, Tom Sims and Jake Burton have found that their own companies which are live, which are still known today and they are well known uh, in the snowboard teams. The snowboarder offer you a lot of different styles and the first one is going to be a free ride which is riding the natural terrains outside the parks. It's freestyle which is riding and performing different tricks and free carving which is riding the fast uh, pace, fast speed, linking the turns together. When it comes to sport, it's really offered by the Olympic Games and the X Games nowadays, by the disciplines like parallel slalom, cross, slope style, half pipe, and my favorite, big air. But what are you going to meet? First, when you come to the trail, uh, it will be the color. How do, how do you know how difficult the trail is? And let me show you the two common, uh, two common uh, ways of treating the difficulties. It's North American and European. And how do they connect it to the slope of the trail? And please, don't treat the diamonds as your friends, it's not the case here. <laughs> uh, okay. When it comes to Moscow, it offers a lot of opportunities for relaxing and riding on the weekends and in the middle of the week, inside and outside the city. And the biggest slopes, the biggest trails located uh, around the Dmitrov over here, which known are um, and the closest to the center located in the Kant and Vrbjov Gore, as you might aware. Uh, just as we have the icebreaker speech for every newcomer in Toastmasters, what are you going to do first when you come into snowboarding? Of course you need to know yourself and pick a proper equipment. The first things you need to know what is your leading uh, foot? Is it right or left? If the leading foot is right, you are goofy. And the left, you are a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> the normal are more often, actually. The next is uh, snowboarding lens and width. And here comes the most, uh, I mean, the common mistake of picking the lens by your head. Because uh, the weight is much more important when you pick the lens of the snowboard. And this is a secret for you, for those who will join 
later on. And the shape of snowboards, uh, the camber rocker flat and hybrid for different styles, for example, mine is hybrid. Uh, but every type of sport, and especially winter sports, snowboarding comes hand by hand with its own risk and there is common injuries. And in snowboarding, it is the wrist injuries and the shoulder, comparing, for example, to the knees in skiing. And the more interesting statistics you can find in the handover material I've distributed. Uh, how, how are you going to protect yourself? And I would recommend the minimum set of uh, gears to keep with you every time you're going to the trail. It will be the helmet, googles, uh, wrist guards, and of course protection shorts. Uh, once you have picked the equipment and put on your gears, you can start your first season. And you need to achieve just two goals while you're doing the first season. It's uh, learning how to ride your hillside, the toy side edges, how to connect them in a turn. And the second goal is learning how to sky lift. And there are a lot of types of sky lifts. My favorite is G-Bone. It hurts me a lot of time, actually, and still doing this. Uh, well, if you never try snowboarding, it's a good chance to do because of different reasons. The first is it offers you a lot of learning curves and a lot of styles afterwards. Uh, it really takes you out of the home every winter, every weekend, and you really feel are lucky when you're going outside in every weather, like me do, and it really de develops your brain, and because you need to overcome your fear, and you need to control a lot of trajectories in front of you, of many riders, not to collide with them. For those uh, who have the only one obstacle to try snowboarding, which is a fear, it's given said that the brave don't live forever, but the coaches don't leave at all. <laughs> Thank you.